Hello there! Today I am going to show you how to ship a piece of art. You can see I have my lovely painting on canvas here. And there's a lot of money to be made in art, but I know a lot of you are squeamish about having to ship it. So I hope I can alleviate some of that fear today. this painting that I sold for a hundred dollars uh, and I've gathered all my shipping materials now this sold on Poshmark yes you can sell things other than clothing on Poshmark uh, so this sold for a hundred dollars on Poshmark so with Poshmark you can ship up to five pounds uh, without having to get an oversized label or, a, or an overweight label Excuse me. Uh, so I am going to double box this. Now, if I was shipping this on an eBay sale, I may or may not double box it because it would make the shipping much more expensive. So I'm going to show you, like, let's pretend it's a $500 painting on eBay because then I would double box it. Probably even $200. Okay. Um, I have already cut down my handy dandy pool noodles. Pool noodles are back at like the dollar stores and such, and hopefully you can get to a dollar store and such right now. I don't know if they're open. Are they open? Does anybody know? Hmm. Anyway, try to get a hold of some pool noodles. I actually got these at the bins, so they basically cost almost nothing because they weigh almost nothing. Um, which is why they're good packing material, because they weigh almost nothing. So I cut them to the sides of, of my painting, as you can see. And then I cut the slit here so that I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that in a minute. All right, but first I want a bubble wrap. So I have a nice big piece of bubble wrap that I am first going to protect the piece from scratches and bumps. Now I know it's a little unorthodox, but yes, I still, I still use my eBay tape. Even if it's a posh sale, you know what? People aren't paying attention. Plus, hey, maybe they'll notice that I sell on eBay too. Why do I want them at eBay versus posh? eBay only takes about 10% of the sale, and Posh takes 20% of the sale. So while I don't pay any listing fees on Posh, I do pay more commission, final value fee, whatever you want to call it. Sorry, I'm fighting with my tape again. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now I got my little layer of bubble wrap. Now, I am going to take my handy dandy pool noodle and I'm going to stretch it out just a little bit to make it a little easier to put on here because it is a tight fit. I probably should have gone the short length but I wanted to super protect it so I went the long length. And there we go. Okay. Pool noodles are attached. Now, I am going to double box this, so it's going to go in a box that's pretty, pretty snug. I don't have to have all the space that I have in the other one. Now, what I didn't do is measure. Ah, I can't double box it. Okay. See? Things change as you ship. You just got to go with it, even if you're making a video. <laughs> okay, we're not going to use that box. And I'm not so sure I have another box I can double box with. So, we're not double boxing. 
That's what that means. Which means now I do have like the box ultimately it's going to go in. And it's a good size box. But now what that means is I want to protect these sides too. Where I wasn't going to do that if I double boxed it. So I'm going to cut this in half. Oh, and pool noodles cut really easy too. I'm just using a little kitchen, might even be a steak knife. Um, yeah, that was really safe, huh? Cutting right into my hand. Boy. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to protect this edge here now. And let me cut this one. You know, this is a little more time consuming than most shipping. So when you're selling this stuff, just make sure that you've allotted a little extra margin, margin profit margin in there so that it's worth your time. This time is money. All right, now we're super protected. Now we're good to go. Now, because this isn't going in a snugger box, I'm going to go back over this with another bubble, which is going to two purpose. It's going to hold on my pool noodles, but it's also going to give that little extra layer of protection as well. And as I like to say, put it in its cocoon. Okay, one little cocoon, almost ready. With a little bit of that eBay tape there. And I need another piece of bubble. Someday I'm going to have my shipping area all set up with my bubble wrap hung up over me. It's going to be a beautiful thing. But progress, progress. All right, and now we'll cocoon this way. Just like that. A piece of my eBay tape there. Now this is ready to go into the big box. It is ready. Now this box I have, it is a little overkill and I do want to cut it down a little bit once I get this in there and figure out. So I'm gonna get this where you can see it. So you can see I've got plenty of room on all sides now. I'm going to put some bubble on this side to snug this in here. I may even use paper because I've got some room to work with. Um, but I am going to cut these down just a little bit. And the way you do that, cut all four seams. Hopefully with a knife that cuts. There we go. The more even you can make it, the easier it's gonna to be to fold. Okay, because what I'm gonna be able to do now is fold these down and make this box a little bit smaller. But first, I'm going to put some paper on the bottom. Okay, so let's take that out for a minute. And now I use this kind of paper, not newspaper. Your customers don't want to see icky newspaper. Newspaper is really dirty. That's ink. Um, but you can get these rolls of, this is actually newspaper paper, but it's not printed on. And you can go actually go get these from your local newspaper place. They have rolls of this stuff and it's pretty cheap. Now, I don't recommend using paper a lot because paper is heavier than peanuts or bubbles or air cushions. And you don't want to add weight unnecessarily. The second thing is, paper is a good space filler, but it doesn't have the 
the absorption, the shock absorption that peanuts or um, bubble or air cushions does. I'm just, I'm surveying my thing here and I think I put too much. Okay. I have to, there we go. All right. Now I am going to use the pillows, the air pillows on the sides. All I'm trying to accomplish with this is to just keep it in the middle of the box. That way if the side gets crushed in shipping, there's still a gap. There's still protection there for this. Whoa. That's a mess. Okay. One there. And I got one more. Get it. Oh no. I'm going to pop it. Oh, I didn't pop it. But wait. Is it, it's holding. It's holding. I realized everything I did was just off camera, but I was just unsticking something from <laughs> Okay. One on each side. Holds it in the middle. I want to hold it in the middle. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to take off one of these flaps. Now, a box cutter would work much better at this. And I'm going to score it first where I need it so I can see my line. And then I'm going to bend it. And now it's a little easier to see where I need to cut especially on that double seam. And there it goes. And it's, ta-da, it's off of there. Okay. Now what I didn't do is put a little extra cushion on the top part, which I'm gonna do with, I'm just gonna do that with a piece of bubble wrap. You know, use what you got. If you've got great materials in surplus, use those. If you don't, this is what I'm trying to show you. You can make do and still have a really nice package. This also has a little bit of protection on, on top because you've got like basically double cardboard. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to score it where I need it to bend just by running my knife across where I want it to bend. And then boom, it's going to cooperate a little better. The box I'm using was actually what the post office shipped some priority supplies in to me. So these come in really handy. I reuse these a lot. And it's just not bending where I want it to bend because I didn't score it there either. Okay. So I could have scored it there too and made it bend a little bit easier, but we're okay. All right. Now I'm going to use, I'm only going to use A little bit of this eBay tape just to get it started and then I am going to use my clear tape on this just because it's stronger tape and I don't want mass confusion by my customer so I'm going to finish taping this up with clear tape okay could get a little loud and again, I like to run tape all the way around for strength. Once I've gone all the way around, then I can do some other layers that aren't all the way around, but they're still tape to tape. Tape to tape is strength. Okay, I've got that. Now I want to go across the top because I've got a gap there. I want to close that gap as much as possible. Whenever you Frankenbox, which is the term used for putting boxes together or changing the shape of the box, you'll probably get some of those little gaps and you want to fill those in. Now, how do I strengthen all that? I go once around this way. And 
And that's it. I have a very, very secure piece of art that will get to the buyer and they will be happy at the way it was packaged. And really those pool noodles are the trick. If you're going to ship things like this, get yourself a supply of pool noodles and uh, cut them as you need them. They are great. And with that, go be profitable and make it fun, even the shipping.